Hi everyone. As you may have read in the update section on my channel page, YouTube has emailed me to say that it won't honour my counter notification against Aminakin in my efforts to get two of my videos restored. This is an astonishing decision with legal implications for YouTube that I fully intend to exploit. But it also has implications for my channel, so let me just run through what's happening. First of all, a bit of law as best I understand it. If someone like Aminakin files a copyright claim, even if it's bogus, YouTube has to take down the offending video, in this case mine. It can't determine whether the copyright claim is legitimate or not, but it has to protect itself from being sued. It's then up to the alleged copyright infringer, that's me, to file a counter notification, which I did. Now, I'm on very solid ground here because the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the DMCA, allows for fair use of other people's copyrighted material for the purpose of critique or parody. So I can use clips from Amina Kin's videos, and if she tries to sue me, she would lose. Once my counter notification was filed, YouTube then passed on my name, telephone number, and address to Amina Kin so that she could sue me for copyright infringement if she chose. She chose not to, and it was a wise decision, because her copyright claim, of course, is completely bogus. This standard procedure basically means that YouTube is immune to being sued for copyright infringement. It claims what's called a safe harbor status, whereby it can't and won't rule on the legitimacy of a copyright claim, but it lets a court decide. If the court decides in favor of the copyright holder, then the video remains blocked. If the copyright holder decides not to sue, as in this case, then the video has to be restored. In my case, YouTube has decided not to restore my videos because it has arbitrarily made up its own ruling about the copyright claim. In other words, it's relinquished its safe harbor status. I'm not a lawyer, but it seems to me the implications for this are huge. And that's the impression I'm getting from people who are lawyers. YouTube depends on its safe harbor status to avoid being sued by every music and film company out there. In fact, it specifically invoked the safe harbor clause of the DMCA in a recent case against Viacom. YouTube effectively said, not our fault if your music videos are shown, because we can't rule on whether a video breaches copyright. But in my case, they're doing just that. Now, YouTube can't pick and choose to invoke its safe harbor status in one case while discarding its safe harbor status in another. Either it has safe harbor status or it doesn't. I'm taking a two-pronged approach to this. I'm grateful to Thunderfoot for contacting YouTube directly because he's a YouTube partner and has direct access to real live people there. At the same time, I'm contacting the Electronic Frontier Foundation to see if I can mount a legal challenge against YouTube. I've no doubt I'll incur the wrath of YouTube, and I fully expect my channel to be targeted for violations of its terms of use if I pursue this legal option. This is YouTube's way of getting round any legal argument and just imposing the heavy hand of censorship, saying we run the website, so we make the rules. It could even result in my channel being shut down. But I'm doing this because it's a fight that has to be fought. If bogus copyright claims are invoked whenever people don't like their views being rebutted or criticized, and YouTube ignores the judicial process and arbitrarily upholds these bogus claims, then academic debate on YouTube is dead. For all our sakes, YouTube's decision cannot be allowed to stand.